welcome to today's broadcast of North Idaho College Public Forum. The crew is comprised of NIC television students and your moderator is North Idaho College political scientist Tony Stewart. It is a privilege to welcome all of our viewers to program number four in the last week in our series entitled How to Be an Ally. The Northwest Coalition Against Malicious Harassment recently met in Spokane for a very, very successful conference with over 300 in attendance and we're very fortunate to have those individuals on our program. Today we're going to talk about the celebration of diversity in our last program. We're very fortunate to have the three guests that we have today. Uh, first of all, I would introduce to you Anna Latimer, who is a therapist, a trainer, and a consultant, and she was one of the keynote speakers at that conference. Anna, welcome to our program. Hi. I'm very pleased to also introduce Barbara W. Hurst, who is the area or regional director for the American Jewish Community, uh, Committee located in Seattle, Washington. She's also a member of the Board of Directors of the Northwest Coalition. And next to her, I'm also very pleased to welcome to the program Karen uh, Yasha Tomi, who is the Pacific Northwest Regional Director of the Japanese American Citizens League. And I'm also very happy to report that she's on the Board of Directors of the Northwest Coalition. Welcome to all of you. We're delighted to have you here. Thank you. Also, I'm very happy to welcome uh, our regular panelist, Steve Schink, who is Dean of Community Relations and Development of Federal College, and Steve shall commence our questioning. Thank you, Tony. Uh, Barbara, the conference that Tony just mentioned, uh, at that conference, you, you uh, coordinated the track on celebrating diversity. Maybe by way of introduction, we could ask you to give us some of your impressions of that conference um, and some of the thought that went into choosing that theme. The conference, I've been fortunate enough to be on the board of directors for some four years and a member of the, one of the founding organizations of the coalition. I attended that first conference in Coeur d'Alene some four years ago and it was a, a very exciting conference and it was fun and exciting to meet uh, people of goodwill who came together to talk about diversity and, and, uh, and what to do about bigotry and discrimination. But there were a handful of people by comparison and lo and behold four years later we have a, a board of directors that uh, we're going to have to move out of our rooms or, or have two tables because there are so many organizations and individuals now represented on the coalition. There are over 300 people in attendance at the, at the uh, uh, coalition meeting, all spellbound, all caring, all looking for tools, uh, those tools that they can pay, take back to their own communities in order to um, combat bigotry and work toward an appreciation of cultural diversity. Um, that particular track that I've been coordinating um, speaks to the issues of, of uh, contributions of various ethnic and uh, cultural communities within our country uh, who, and their contributions to the fabric and strength and, and, uh, and richness, really, of the uh, United States. Karen, I believe you're also a member of the, of the uh, Board of Directors of the Coalition. Uh, Barbara talked about the growth of that organization. In your opinion, is that, uh, is that a result of the successes it, it has enjoyed? Is it a result of uh, increased awareness of the problems of, uh, of uh, prejudice and bigotry, or both? I think it's a, a factor of both of the, the reasons that you mentioned. Um, I think, however, there's also a, a great need um, in this day and age and unfortunately to have an organization, organization like the coalition because of the rise in, for example, anti-Asian violence, uh, rise in bigotry, uh, biased crimes. Um, it's a shame and yet an organization like this, it's, it's necessary to have to combat that. And Anna, I think as a speaker at that, at that conference, you talked about some of the effects of the violence that Karen just mentioned. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. It's real important to understand what happens to a developing human being who experiences within his community and the world messages that have to do with you, not, you don't belong here, what you think or how you act or how you talk is not okay. Messages that are, go directly to that developing child inside that cause hurt and pain and trauma to a developing person and how we have to recognize that in order to stop that trauma from being carried on and 
terms of growing up and carrying it and then being passed on um, is that we must recognize the trauma for what it is and name it if it's racism, uh, bigotry, some form of pain to the developing self. In order to resolve it, we must be able to name it and allow the feelings and support that individual and support ourselves. It's, it's something that we must do together. It's, it's not a process that an individual can do by himself or herself. I want to give you a quote that I saw from a youth camp in which they were meeting to uh, celebrate and understand differences and diversity. And from that, get a reaction from all three of you. And the quote that I saw was uh, paraphrased something like this. It is not sufficient to tolerate differences or diversity, but it is important to celebrate differences or diversity. May we start with you, Karen? Um, I think for me personally, my identity comes from the differences that I bring, not only uh, my Japanese ancestry, but my own personal values, um, morals, that type of thing. And what I would hope for, for my children is not only to learn about Japanese American culture, but to learn about Native American culture, to learn about African American culture, because it's all very important. And that difference that I bring um, is also the identity. So the difference or the collaborative efforts of these different types of individuals and what they bring is, in my mind, the beauty of what America is about. It's the difference that, that brings on that identity. Uh, Barbara? We began along that. I was thinking as you were talking and as Karen was talking, uh, uh, the sense of, of uh, a melting pot. We used to talk about the United States as a melting pot and we were going to dump everybody into one pot and we were going to come out uh, Americanus. And what we've grown to know and appreciate is that is this diversity, that the fabric of this country, that we have been enriched by the contributions of a variety of different ethnic and religious groups. Uh, we are stronger, we are more exciting, we are more vital because of that kind of diversity. Um, and it's okay now to talk with pride about one's own heritage, one, one's own sense of belonging to the fabric. Uh, we, we don't have to meld together. Our differences are acceptable, uh, not, not a source of shame, but a source of pride. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems to me that that's something that we've been celebrating and, and talking about during the conference. Mm -hmm. Anna? I am Native American. My tribe is Seashelt, and I'm also Filipino. From teachings within the Native culture, there is a teaching that has to do with the sacred circle, a circle. Um, and a teaching on that circle has to do with colors, four sacred colors, red, white, black, and yellow. And the teaching behind that is that that represents the four groups of human beings on Mother Earth. And the teaching behind, there's thousands of teachings, and the teaching behind that is that each group, each person within that group, has a gift that must be shared. And the circle teaches about harmony and connectedness. And in order to connect, we must all share those gifts with one another so that we may become full human beings. And that's the celebration, is the connecting, the sharing, and the becoming full human beings together. You, you also talked about um, a sense of pride in oneself, in sense of, of having something to offer, a place, something to contribute. And mm -hmm. that seemed to me so valuable and so important. Mm -hmm. Which is the celebration. Right, right. And, and I think your definition of celebration is just excellent, because if you take individuals who have had the most ingrained teachings of bigotry and prejudice. And I'm very cognizant of the fact that we talk about all society uh, of those who are working on bigotry and prejudice as recovering racist or recovering sexist, yeah. but, but those who don't attempt to deal with their prejudices. Mm -hmm. they do or not recovering human beingness. That's an excellent To recover one. one's human beingness. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and if one does not do that, and, and what Karen was talking about earlier, 
the richness that we find in, in on this planet because of all the cultures that is a void in the lives of those individuals mm -hmm. and as Dr. King indicated that through the hate too that one dies would you like to, the, to respond to both what Dr. King was saying and the, and the the void that you have without that richness. Mm -hmm. There's a loss. It's, it's a loss that I experience, that you experience, which then our children will experience. It's, it's a loss in terms of there's a part that doesn't get fully developed inside. And so there's a, that's the void, the, the hole inside. And when we feel that hole inside, it's, it's crummy to, to walk around with it. I want to fill it with something. And we might want to fill it up with things outside ourselves rather than fill it up with ourselves. And we fill it up with maybe material goods, mm -hmm. uh, addictions, um, food, um, compulsive behaviors, competition. We might want to fill that, that hole rather than recognize that perhaps there's a loss and to just name it for what it is and perhaps grieve the losses that have occurred together because mm -hmm. grieving is a natural human mm -hmm. reaction to a loss mm -hmm. and in that grieving process we might ha be able to connect right. uh, during the course of this cultural diversity track uh, what was so impressive and so moving uh, were the expressions of pain uh, the pain that a, a Jew uh, a Native American, a black, uh, an Asian, felt with bigotry and persecution, mm -hmm. and the inability to share that. Mm -hmm. um, if, you know, you can't walk around with your heart on your sleeve, and so you don't, you lock it up, you bottle it up. Um, and in, on occasion, you overreact to, to uh, occurrences because there was no one to share this pain with. There was no way to rid oneself of the pain um, nowhere to, no way to go beyond the pain. And so what coalitions like the Northwest Coalition uh, have offered, it seems to me, um, is that opportunity to share not only the joy in, in our own heritage, but also the pain that has come from bigotry. Mm -hmm. Because somehow or other, that makes uh, our connectedness, if you will, um, more vivid, um, more alive. Karen? Yeah. Um, I think Barbara is very right. It's, it's, it's sharing the pain. Um, I think for my own uh, family, the Japanese American experience itself, um, the immigration of coming to the United States, first of all, giving up everything at home, and then coming to a new world, and then when the Second World War started, losing everything. And my family is not unique in that there is not a lot of connection, family connection, because everything was lost. And it's very difficult about my family, especially my grandparents, to talk about their experiences of being discriminated against, having their civil liberties taken away, taken away, all of the injustices that have been suffered. And I think it's only in recent times that people have started to become more interested in developing oral histories, to finding out about the past, because there was such a shame um, involved in identifying identifying oneself as being different. Mm -hmm. Do you know, all ethnic minorities, it seems to me, share a historic memory. It doesn't matter whether I stood at Sinai. Uh, my people stood at Sinai, mm -hmm. and so I share that experience. It doesn't matter whether I was a part of the Holocaust. Uh, I share the pain of the Holocaust. It's part of me. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure with you and the, and the internment, that's very vivid, and that will shape your psyche and that of your children. And forevermore, we need to be able to share that kind of thing. One thing I am mm -hmm. so delighted that a lot of us had a part in four years ago was the coalition, because I hear that, and Barbara was uh, expressing that to us just a moment ago, that if the coalition died today, and I don't think that's going to happen, Barbara has indicated, you know, of course it's not. real growth. It's, it's really, <laughs> really, really blossoming. But if it did, the sharing that goes on, or even without the coalition, now that these interconnectedness have been made here in the Northwest. Life is different because of it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The coalition has provided a resource, uh, an experience, not only a resource, but an experience that if we can translate it into our own communities, uh, bring it alive there, um, 
what a wonderful experience that would mm -hmm. be. What a wonderful contribution. Steve Sheen. I'm, I'm wondering, as I sit here and listen to this conversation, um, and our topic today is celebrating diversity, do you three feel that that is a natural thing for people to do? Um, in other words, if, uh, if, if we had someone who had been isolated from diversity, been, been with people of, uh, of the same race and the same background, the same customs, all his or her life, and was suddenly moved uh, into a multicultural environment, is it natural for them to celebrate that, or would they feel threatened by it, and is, is there a great deal of stress involved for some, for some people in learning to do what we're talking about today? Mm -hmm. It's sort of your business to... In, <laughs> <laughs> the faces look the same. I'm going to give you first crack. Initially, yes. If we just, if we just put it into um, the human experience of when we meet someone new. For instance, if we just think of our mate, um, I'm happy to be thinking of him right now. When I, I first met him, and there certainly was uh, a wonderfulness to noting the differences, but as we began to, to know and get to know each other and identify differences, that it does cause a stress uh, because I notice that it's, it's different than how I might think or how I might feel or how I view something, and it causes a, a stress, and it isn't good or bad. I think that that's the natural process of when we become aware of something new. It catches our attention, and it pulls us into viewing it and feeling it, and it feels a little bit uncomfortable. If we stay in there and hang in there with the stress, something beautiful occurs, which is a, back to a connecting. And in terms of my husband and I, We've been together for over 20 years, and at our last anniversary, he shared with me that it's been wonderful getting to unknow you. And that was so beautiful to me because we, we enter relationships thinking we know the other person mm -hmm. or we, we know everything of, uh, about people who we think are similar. And we don't. We truly don't. And if we allow that stress of allowing someone to emerge, it, it turns into a, a wondrous occasion to celebrate. You know, it's a, it's a question of in and out, I think. Um, we are the in-group, whatever group, and, and all of those strangers out there. And then we move out, we take those steps out, and we reach out and scary. Mm -hmm. But we, we do it, and we make connections, and they've been valuable for us, and we begin to know and to appreciate. And then we're frightened again, because what if we say the wrong thing? What if I use a, a term that is a derogatory term, and I don't know that? So then we, we retreat back into our little shell sometimes, um, afraid to continue the, the adventure, the journey. And then, uh, as Anna said, then at the end of that journey, or maybe the journey never ends, as you've said, uh, we, are, we, we feel enriched, uh, we feel blessed mm -hmm. that we were given this opportunity. And a little sorry for those people who don't have that mm -hmm. kind of experience. And maybe that makes us more sensitive to the bigot as well. Uh, how unfortunate. Takes away some of the rage, maybe. How unfortunate that he or she doesn't have, hasn't had that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Karen, how is the task force helping people to see that perspective? The task force? Um, I think one is that it brings on an awareness that everyone with the exception of the Native American, comes from an immigrant background, and that the people that came over on the Mayflower were boat people like the Southeast mm -hmm. Asians are boat people. Um, and I think it's that realization in a non-threatening manner that it provides the forum and the opportunity for people to ask questions and not to feel uh, defensive about not knowing the answers. In my particular workshop that I conducted on Asian Americans, I gave a, a short self-test. And perhaps I phrased the question a little bit incorrectly in, in that I asked how many people were surprised at how poorly or how well that they had done. And no one ra raised their hand, and I thought it was because everyone knew the answer. But it was because everyone in that room was educated enough to know that they didn't know the answers, and so therefore were not surprised. But they were still open and receptive to, to the information that I had to share with them. Mm. 
I, I've been sitting here hearing what you're saying and I also been experiencing uh, through the years what we're dealing with and in, in our diversity and I, I just share a personal experience and reaction and then uh, to relate to something you've said I'm a very different person than I was a year ago or four years ago or ten years ago and I'm very happy that I am that you know, I'm, a, I'm a more expanded uh, full person in, 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 in my growth and it will never end mm -hmm. But for those who don't, and those who uh, reject diversity, and they're filled with their prejudice and bigotry, I heard Barbara saying that in one way they are victims, aren't they? Although they victimize other people. Right. How would you respond to that? I think more and more it's going to be less and less possible to uh, shut oneself out off from the rest of society. Um, I think we talk about multicultural education or even a more sophisticated approach to education. Uh, in our daily, the workforce is multi-ethnic um, and increasingly so. Uh, we are a nation of minorities now where there is no majority. There are only many minorities making up mm -hmm. the whole. It's going to be difficult, it seems to me, to say, to, to uh, huddle if you will, uh, in our own particular groups and resist the influence of the outside. And we're going to have to deal with those with the bigots because they're always going to be with us. And I suppose that's a message we need to learn as well, that we can contain bigotry, but out of frustration and anger and hostility and disconnectedness, mm -hmm. we'll always have bigots among us. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we have a role. Karen? Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, I think the connectedness is what is going to be the strongest force that we have by working together. Um, I can give you many examples of how individually a person may not be able to make as, as strong of an impact as if we all work together in a common goal. I think that that's the key of the coalition. Right? That, that's the beauty of the coalition itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anna? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree that um, there's, there are going to be people um, that we call bigots and people who are experiencing loss because there's always going to be fear. Mm -hmm. It's a normal, e it's an emotion that all human beings have. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there are human beings who want to hold on to the fear, mm -hmm. that that's the major emotion to feel right now that it's fearful to feel connected to someone mm -hmm. because maybe someone's going to see me and not like me. Mm -hmm. That maybe somebody is not going to allow me to be. And that fear is what an individual might want to hang on to. And fear is just going to be out there. And that's, it's scary. It's scary to have to recognize that. Uh, but it's, it's just there, and it shows itself in many, many forms, mm -hmm. and a lot of the forms are scary. Mm -hmm. Steve? Barbara, you said something that I thought was very interesting a minute ago when you said that, that uh, bigotry and prejudice are always going to be out there. Um, I guess maybe I've always assumed that, that yeah. eventually, uh, as each of us get to know others uh, enough, uh, that, that prejudice will naturally disappear, that most of it is, uh, um, comes from ignorance, not from knowledge. Uh, with a broad exposure to different peoples and different cultures, we're going to realize, as Karen said, that, that there are a lot more things that we have in common than that, that, that make us different. Um, you really believe that prejudice is something that we'll never overcome? And uh, I think that's right. I mean, I do believe it. Um, and I come from an organization, a represented organization, that deals in bigotry and prejudice. Um, and ways to overcome that. But bigotry, racism, uh, in all its virulent forms is not a rational feeling. It isn't something that people sit down. It comes out of some kind of enormous frustration and rage. We saw in the Midwest perfectly decent individuals who faced with economic crisis, uh, the loss of their farms, the loss of their homes, suddenly those individuals who, uh, who were good people or appeared to be good people 
turned and, and talked about Jews and, and uh, uh, some kind of conspiracy. And how could that be? It wasn't rational. It wasn't reasonable. The same people that in turn, the Japanese Americans, were not racist or bigots, really. They were f terrified and frightened. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they acted out of, out, of, out of that fear, and it was, and it was a horror. And they mm -hmm. wrecked havoc and pain. And, and uh, we, as a country, suffered loss as a result of that. Those things are going to be with us. If we live, it seems to me, in a, in a dream, and if we measure our success in perfect, in a terms of a perfect world, we are bound to be disappointed. And we can't look out over 300 or 400 people who sat in that coalition, or in that room of the coalition, and said, we are here to affirm diversity and eradication or, or a, uh, a diminishing of bigotry. Um, I'm happy to, to see hate crimes legislation passed. I'm happy to see um, training in the schools. I'm happy to see law enforcement training. Mm -hmm. I think those are good, positive things that we ought to celebrate as we celebrate our diversity mm -hmm. and, uh, and not say that we are successful only if, they're, if bigotry ends. I don't think it's ever going to happen. But we really are working on a lot of different fronts, aren't we? You're talking about the legislation and public policy and, and political leaders have an important role, as we as individuals have also. Uh, would you agree, uh, Anna, that that's uh, happening more in, 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 on more different fronts and avenues? It is, and what I'm really struck by is, as I travel around, that I see it happening at a grassroots level. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing children, small, little, teeny tiny children, um, worry about the earth and worry about people and openly ask questions. We, we need to recapture that, that recovery of our human beingness to be able to, to do that. And I'm seeing people in communities who are saying, you know, I'm just a regular ordinary kind of person, um, but I want to impact help me, let me know what I need to do. Where do I hook up? So, so it's happening. Something, something is happening. On that note, we have to end. I wish we had more time. You've been just absolutely excellent in helping our viewers and us as we move into understanding and celebrating diversity. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you've enjoyed this program and this has been a very, very productive four weeks. Uh, we thank you for viewing in and please join us again next week. Until then, have a good week. I am Tony Stewart. That's that's what we miss. We could send. North Idaho College Public Forum can be seen at the same time each week over this station. This production was videotaped earlier by an NIC student crew for viewing at this more appropriate time.